This is probably the most delusional take that I have seen on Twitter, but it really is how modern society is supposed to be functioning. I mean, we notice how the entertainment industry is set up, and it's literally set up by this goal. So we got a serious question for well-meaning white people. It kind of sounds like, yo, peasants, answer to the Lord. When you show up at a get-together like this, do you notice there are zero black people or not? If so, do you say or do anything about it? To who? Please be honest, this is a safe space unless you say something dumb or racist. Well, we live in 2023, the concept of racism has been watered down so much that if you do not want to go see a movie from a multi-trillion dollar corporation, that is enough to be labeled a racist. If you do not like uh, Black Ariel, right? Like, racismus. Uh, but the second interesting thing is, like, do any, like, like, what do you want people to do? Like, go fetch a nearby black person? Here's another question. Do black people even want to be there? I don't want to be there. Look how many people there are. I'm an introvert. I, I hate large gatherings like this. But secondly, I don't like black people a minority. I mean, it's like, what, like a third of the entire United States? Would there even be enough black people to go around for every single gathering of white people? It's like, oh, we can't gather. Like, the, our black friend can't come today. It's so ridiculous, isn't it? But this is literally how the entire system is functioned. Like, if you have a corporation where you don't hire enough black people, you're racist. It's like, it's very interesting. So let's assume that there are two white people that exist which aren't racist. But according to Robin D'Angelo, that thing doesn't exist. It's like the, the inherent state of white people. And if you try to prove that you're not a racist, that proves that you are. So, but I don't know. Like, let's assume there are two white people that aren't racist. Uh, if they form a company, they become racist. Why? Because it's just two people in a company, they're both white, right? If you write, uh, something, like you write a novel, and, you know, you write about your childhood, and you're like, you grew up in a white place, oh, racist, where's the black people? So, it, it is such a bizarre thing, isn't it? It's like, it's a performative thing, like, you, you gotta display, and it's also interesting, why only black people, right? Like, why, why not, oh, there's no Asians here, what are the Asians? What are the Eskimos? What are the Hindis? Right? Like, like, so, so you need to make sure that at every gathering, uh, you, you look at the pedigree, the heritage. Maybe go back in time. Bring a Nazi, because I understand like the Nazis had an entire ideology based on race, and they actually had universities where they did measurements, and they had like all of these things in order to make sure that people are of pure stock. So we can use their knowledge to make sure that our gatherings in the modern day have diversity, right? Holy shit. But not only that, right? Uh, does it apply to sex and gender as well? So, like, girls' nights out. Is that sexist because there's no men over there? Right? The, the interesting part is that it implies intent, right? It implies that these people that you see in the picture, uh, first of all, they, they do not have black friends, right? It, it can't be that at this particular gathering there were none. But it's also the fact that you would never put under the same scrutiny uh, Jewish people, Asian people, Hindi people, right? I mean, hell... In the United States, you have entire enclave of people that do not speak English, of various ethnicities. And, and uh, well, that, that doesn't seem to be a problem, now is it? And you would never criticize them. Why? Because you know that these individuals are responsive to this type of criticism that makes no logical sense. Because it doesn't matter if it's logical or not. It matters about social saving and uh, showing that you have the correct moral framework. Uh, which is why... There was, and this is the most bizarre stuff that I have ever seen, <clears throat> especially during the Black Lives Matter protest. There was an entire industry of ladies that would require that you pay $2,500 for a dinner. Uh, and by the way, the dinner wasn't included in the price. Like, you'd also have to purchase the food. So with $2,500, they would come to your place to lecture you what a racist bigot you are. You and your other guests. Like, like, this is now a religion. Like, those were members of the clergy. It's like calling a priest to sanctify your house. Right? And the, the priest would talk about the original sin and how you need to up repent and shit like that. Um, and, and this was used like a purse poppy thing. It was used to show to other people, hey, look, you know, we did the thing. Like, we're, we're more or less racist than you because we did the thing. We got, look, here's the receipt. We paid for this lady. How much? $2,500. Like, that was a booming industry, and it's interesting, because during Black Lives Matter, they increased the price. Why did they increase the price? Because the demand was so high. Is this normal? Like, seriously, th th there are people in America that want to live like this.
With this type of mentality, it's like, oh, you can't have a gathering unless you uh, test the DNA of all the people involved. I mean, w would you consider that the same? Like, if, if there were, like, some black people sitting at a table in a bar, would you be like, well, why is there any whites here? It's like, Jesus. And, of course, you know, you got a response. Since I never post publicly, I'll p respond privately. I personally call it out whenever I'm at a function with no black folks. It makes me feel uncomfortable. Like, how much training did the university have to drill it to your head to feel uncomfortable because uh, the, the heritage, the pedigree? So he feels uncomfortable. I'm white. However, almost if not all other white folks I know do not do this. I do comfortably now. I don't know if I always did. And if not, when I change, but I know I have four years now, it signals to me that something is wrong and unsafe. Like what? Are people going to pull out a knife and start stabbing each other? What are, what are you talking about? What is unsafe? Unsafe means problematic, okay? Like this is the new lexicon. This is the new word that dropped. This is what they're talking about. It's problematic. Problematic means they can't really explain what the problem is, but they would like it to stop, right? So you're doing something that's not bad, not immoral, not illegal, and they will say, well, this is problematic because their teachings, like the university professor has spent months to, to build up the house of cards until it reaches to the point where it explains why it's problematic, but they don't have time or they don't even have the knowledge to know how they got there. Uh, so they will just say it's problematic. Now, people notice that problematic is a word that leftists used all the fucking time, so they stop caring about it. And now they use unsafe. But again, like, dude, there's like 20 women over there. What, what the fuck is unsafe about that? Like, what, what would the women do? Why is it not safe? It, and by the way, imagine the racism. Imagine the fucking racism. Like, if you see 20 Muslims sitting at a table, and you would say, well, there's no non-Muslims there, uh, it must be unsafe. You would get canceled within two seconds. Like, I, I don't even think I would manage to, to finish reading your post before you'd get uh, canceled. So you must go out of your way often to not make black friends in order for this to happen. Um... No, not necessarily. I mean, it could be a family dinner. It could be like a place that's... But it could be Martha's Vineyard. This picture could be taken at Martha's Vineyard. I don't know. Like, like, uh, and, and again, like, you are not applying the same standard when it comes to different ethnicities. Like, if you have a, an enclave where it's only people that speak Spanish, and there's not a single person that speaks English in the area... You'd not say, well, they're going out of their way in order not to learn English, which, by the way, is true. And a little bit puzzling. It's like, if I were to go to a different country, like if I were to travel to Japan, the first thing that I would do would be to learn Japanese, because you're at a disadvantage if you don't. Like, how do you talk with the authorities? Like, like, let's say, you know, someone gets into a bar fight next to you, and they call a cop. Like, he's going to speak Japanese, he's going to talk with the other Japanese people before they talk to you, and they're going to get their side of the story. Many foreigners actually get in trouble in Japan because they don't speak Japanese, right? But the left encourages people not to speak English. So it is what it is. You know, um, I do not believe that uh, this is a problem. I, I think that people who think that this is a problem are the problem. And, and more importantly, um, if you see a bunch of leftists, you know, like it's the same like saying, oh, why is there no Christian here? Oh, because you guys are so sinful, you know, like you, you must, you must praise Satan or some shit. It's not like that type of argument, right? It's like assuming intent. Like you do not know who these people are. You do not talk with these people. You assume the, the fact that they must be racist. Uh, so yeah, it's called a race baiter, isn't it? Let me know what you guys think. And as usual, I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.